Woodbury, for the skin you love to touch. Woodbury brings you direct from Hollywood the Woodbury double feature. First, Hollywood's best-known, best-loved reporter, Luella Parsons, with exclusive news about your favorite stars, direct from the glamour center of the world. And Hollywood Mystery Time, starring Constance Moore and Dennis O'Keefe. Now, here's beauty news from the world's beauty capital. Girl... Famous Hollywood stars can't afford to depend on hit or miss matching of makeup colors, and neither can you. Many stars, like Maria Montez, now in Universal Sudan, know they can depend on Woodbury matched makeup for perfectly matching shades of powder, lipstick, and rouge. Brilliant matching shades of lipstick and rouge are included at no extra cost in every dollar sized box of famous, flattering Woodbury film finish face powder. That powder is flattering. You've never seen such becoming, exquisite shades. And the fine and new texture clings like a dream. You can find your most becoming film finish powder shades for as little as ten cents. Then get the big dollar size Woodbury film finish powder that includes at no extra cost your exciting, perfectly matched, Woodbury matched makeup. Girls, get it tonight. For your own delight and for his. And now, here she is, Loretta Parsons. Hello to all of you from Hollywood. The most surprising matrimonial news of the entire year was the sudden marriage last night of Jimmy Sims to multi-millionaire socialite Hyatt Dane. Everyone thought Jimmy's heart belonged to Pat and Ernie and that Hyatt was in love with Evelyn Keyes. Well, I had a scoop on that one all right in the Los Angeles Examiner this morning. Maria Montez, just out of the hospital, and Jean-Pierre Olmont have not yet admitted it, but I have it straight from the stork's mouth. A baby is due in February. One of the most heroic women in this war is Claire Phillips of the U.S. Secret Service. To get important information, she risked her life behind Jack Lines in Manila. Imprisoned, tortured, starved for months, she was finally rescued by General MacArthur. Washington decorated her, and now she is headed for Hollywood because Mary Pickford wants to film her story. Here's news. That vivacious French actress, Fifi Dorsey, is all excited. She told me that she is marrying Peter Ricketts of the Coast Guard in August. Terrible news about Sonny Tuff's hand. He smashed it in a taxi cab door two weeks ago, and it's so badly infected he may lose it. Guess who was the only American comic to entertain the big three at Potsdam? Nobody else but your old friend, Private Mickey Rooney. I hear from Glenda Farrell's son, Corporal Tommy, also in the show, that Mickey really went to town. Even Stalin laughed. I don't blame him. Former New York mayor, the popular Jimmy Walker, is in the Cedars of Lebanon Hospital, suffering with a stomach ailment. Carol Bouquet, one of the top MGM directors, married for many, many years, will have a surprise for his son in the Army. When son comes home, there will be another bouquet in the family, courtesy of Mr. Stork. I just learned that Judy Canova's husband, Master Sergeant Chet England, was directly responsible for unearthing a secret film picturing German spies, many of whom may still be operating unsuspected in other countries. A salute to you, Chet, for a good job well done. Pretty movie actress Peggy Barnstrom writes that she and Dead End Kid, Leo Garcia, are contemplating a honeymoon. Leo's friends are glad because the torch he carried lighted up the whole town when his ex fell in love with Groucho Marx and married him. Remember that hot wire I received saying that the 20th Century Limited was held up while Betty Hutton said goodbye to a wealthy Chicagoan, Ted Briskin? Well, now here's more news. Betty herself told me she will marry Briskin in late September. The Luella Parsons Medal for the Best Picture of the Week goes to United Artists Picture Guest Wife. A really cute comedy about a devoted wife who goes on a second honeymoon with another man. But don't get shocked. There's an unusual twist. 
that saves it from being too naughty. A bow to Jack Skirball and director Sam Wood for a swell farce. And the medals for the best performances go to lovely Claudette Colbert as the wife and to Donna Michi, the flirtatious friend. You enjoy Claudette's neat way of getting even with the two men in her life. As for Don, as always, he's completely charming. Speaking of Don and Michi, Don and his wife, Honey, have adopted two little girls, Bonnie and Connie. Don tells me his four boys, Donnie, Ronnie, Lonnie, and Tommy, named the girls. What rhyming, what Tommy, what red points. Well, I am surprised. Bill Williams, who is being hailed as RKO's Van Johnson, was divorced a whole month ago in Los Angeles under his real name. It's William Cat. K A W T. Nobody knew that Bill was even married, much less divorced. Director Howard Hawks, who first put Lauren Bacall on the screen, has selected a new honey for stardom. She's Joan Marshall, better known as Mrs. Dick Haynes. Marsha Hunt, pretty MGM actress, obtained a quick divorce from Captain Jerry Hopper yesterday in Mexico. As far as I know, there's no one else. The rumored clinic hints that Phyllis Brooks, bride of Lieutenant McDonald, will be buying baby clothes sometime soon. Last minute news. Randy Scott narrowly escaped death a few hours ago when a truck ran into an automobile and hit the motorcycle he was riding. He had some stitches taken. He might have had as serious an accident as Keenan Wynn or Van Johnson, but for his presence of mind. These motorcycles are mighty dangerous and shouldn't be used by movie stars, believe me. That's all tonight. See you next Sunday. And now, the makers of Woodbury Complete Beauty Cream. Beauty cream for the skin you love to touch. Present Dennis O'Keefe and Constance Moore in Hollywood Mystery Time. Tonight, hot and low down. You'd expect a producer of Hollywood smash hits like Jim Lawton to be interested in nothing but the motion picture business. But with a warm July sun making a golden blot on the thick carpet of his studio office, and his very personable secretary, Gloria Dean, close by, pencil and notebook in hand, Jim's mind and eyes are wandering to a newspaper on his desk. Jim, I know Dick Tracy is fascinating, but you started dictating a memo, remember? Hmm? Hmm? Uh, Father always said there would be days like this. Yeah, yes, I wish that's all your father ever said about me. Well, oh, Jim, will you stop mumbling into that newspaper and finish dictating it? Hey, I get this editorial. Editorial? You mean you finished the sport page and the funnies already? Yeah, it looks like Cookie has his head on the block and it's about to be chopped off. Cookie? In trouble? Yes, up to his pretty sun-kissed neck. Listen to this blast. It's addressed to the police commissioner. What are you going to do about the racketeers and gamblers who are taking millions a week away from the war workers of this city? Or is Captain Cook allowing this vicious racket to survive for reasons best known to himself? Why, that's rotten. If I were Cookie, I'd sue that sheet for libel. A cookie wouldn't even take an apple off a push card. Oh, of course he wouldn't. But it is true, Gloria. Gambling places are springing up like mushrooms all over the... I'll get it. Mr. Lawton's office. Hello, Gloria. Cookie. Well, of all things, Jim and I were just talking about you. Oh, then Jim's there, huh? Yeah. Oh, good. May I talk to him? Just a minute. Here, dear. Uh, hiya, fella. And before you say a word, I want you to know that I'm going to ask the head of our studio advertising to pay a little call on the editor of that slandering yellow newspaper and tell them oh, that... Oh, now, you... wait a minute, Jim. I've been whipping boy for those sensational so-called journalists before, and I can take it. But I got a favor to ask you, Jim. Something personal. More favor? Okay, Cookie, fire away. What is it, Jim? Has Cookie lost his job? Don't be so impatient, my pet. Go on, Cookie, what's on your mind? Well, Jim, you know my kid brother, Stan. Well, he's a civilian again, just got discharged after 37 months in the Army. Oh, that's grand. I'm glad to hear it. And look, if you're worried about a job for Stan, just send him out here. No, that isn't it, Jim. With what he gets from the government and my savings, I want that kid to go back to college. But he's got a screwy idea of his own. Well, maybe after three years in the Army... He wants to join the force, be a cop. If I have to beat it through his thick head with a nightstick, no brother of mine's going to make the same mistake I made. Oh, what do you want the kid to do? Well, you know how he respects you, Jim. Now, he's coming down here to have lunch with me. And I thought if you just happened to drop in and had a little talk with him, 
If you could convince him to go back to college and learn to be a chemist the way he'd always planned. Right. If you don't mind my own lunch date, Gloria coming along will be at your office at, say, uh, 12.30. Okay, Gloria? If we can finish this memo there, let's go. <laughs> Won't you even listen to what Jim has to say? Okay, Miss Lawton, I'm sorry. But honestly, you might as well save your breath. I don't want to go back to college. All I want is to be like my brother. Oh, now look, if you learn a profession, you might find opportunities that you don't even dream exist. Jim's right, Stan. Police work is a thankless job. I don't care. It's the kind of work that'll make me happy. Oh, you think Cookie's happy? Well, if you mean that blast in the paper this morning, sure he's upset. But that isn't going to stop him. Why, he told me just before lunch that he'd already closed six of those gambling joints last week. The whole trouble is that just as fast as he closes one location, they open another next day. Past workers, those boys, aren't they? I wonder how they manage to move around that quickly. Jim, doesn't it seem strange to you that they close one night and open up the very next day someplace else? Well, yes, it does. Say, hmm? say, you know, there, there might be a couple of interesting angles there at that. For example, uh, suppose this gambling syndicate is run by, uh, well, a, a real estate operator, you see, who has a lot of vacant houses. Vacant now... houses? These days? Oh, oh, well, well, suppose we discard that theory and attack the problem in a different manner. And uh, <laughs> you were the one who was just going to talk me out of being a detective. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, Cookie is on a spot, and there might be something I could do to help him. I know, Jim. You can find out where those gambling houses are located. Go there, play roulette, and with your luck, break the bank and make them close, because they're out of money. <sighs> Gloria, just because I lost $11 last mm -hmm. night playing gin rummy. Oh, but honestly, Stan, if, if I could do something to help that brother of yours, it... Oh, Cookie, didn't expect you back yet. Well, I got as far as the garage when I was called back. Bill Reardon, one of our motorcycle boys, was just killed by a truck. Killed? Murdered. Murdered? Well, what do you mean? Well, two witnesses saw him light out after a truck. Just as he pulled alongside of it to flag him down, the driver deliberately swerved into him and then beat it. Oh, that's awful. Any idea why he was chasing the truck? Nope. Bill was dead on arrival when they got him to the hospital. So I sent Tex Campbell out to check on the license number of the truck. Wait a minute, Cookie. Aside from the fact that you liked Reardon, he was in the traffic division, not in your department. Why did they report it to you? Well, if you must know, Reardon and two other motor cops were assigned to me just this week to see if they can run down any information on those gambling houses. Gambling houses? Say, say, this thing might start fitting together. You're right, Mr. Lawton. Now, look, suppose these gamblers... That'll be enough out of you, Stan. Incidentally, I got you a reservation to go back to college next week. I'm not going back to college. And what's more, oh, I... Oh, now, 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 wait a minute, Stan. There are enough things wearing Cookie right now without you adding to it. Well, here comes Tex. Hope he's got some dope on that truck. Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Lawton. Miss Dean. Hi, Tex. Hello. Captain, the truck belonged to Chick Crutcher, one of his fleet of moving vans. Crutcher? That dirty chiseler. I knew I'd catch up with him someday. Well, you haven't caught up with him yet. Because the truck was reported stolen two hours ago. Jim, isn't Chick Crutcher supposed to be sort of a, a racketeer? Oh, look, honey, you're getting no place fast. Even though the truck belongs to Crutcher, if it was stolen, he's not responsible. Besides, this isn't going to... Say, say, wait a minute. Didn't I read that Crutcher bought that big ranch out in the Baldwin Hills? Oh, you mean the one we used as location for the ranch follies of 1945? Hey, now, wait a minute, you two. What's the ranch got to do with finding out who murdered Bill Reardon? Maybe nothing and maybe a lot. Maybe finding out who's running the gambling racket in this town. What do you mean, Jim? I mean, let's get back to my office. If I'm not mistaken, we have some still pictures of that ranch. And I want to get a gander at them right now. Sure, sure. I bet that's it. Look. Look at this picture that shows the side of the house and the two barns. Yeah, I'm looking, but I don't see anything that looks like an answer to our problem. Do you, Tex? No, no, I don't, Captain. Oh, don't you get it? See the size of those two barns? Why, those barns are large enough to hide 20 trucks in. Oh, but who wants to hide 20 trucks? Oh, Chick Crutcher. He's the kind of a no-good character I think he is. Don't you see it, Cookie? His ranch is right smack in the middle of the biggest war plant area in Southern California. Oh, I see. The trucks he already owns, legitimately. So he loads them with gambling equipment and hides them in those barns so that he can set up on a new location on an hour's notice. And that would account for Bill Reardon following the truck that killed him. 
Bill must have gotten wise to something and was trailing it. Yeah, except that the truck was reported stolen two hours before. Tex, they reported it stolen two hours ago, but that doesn't say the report was turned in two hours ago. Look, Captain, let me go out to that ranch and do some checking up. I got a little personal axe to grind. Bill Reardon was the best friend I had in the world. I'd like to, Tex, but you can't just walk in out there and look around, you know. If Jim's right about Crutcher, there'll be a couple of strong-arm boys guarding the gate. Well... Couldn't you sort of hide Tex out there, Cookie? Say, disguised as a petunia or something? Well, that's the answer. We could plant Tex out there and, no pun intended, as a gardener. That way, Tex would have the run of the entire place. Come on, Captain, you gotta do oh, it. Oh, he's right, Cookie, and just think. In nice sunny weather like this, Tex will get a better suntan than he would down at the beach. Yes? Mr. Lawton, there's a Captain Cook and his brother here to see you. Oh, good, good. Send them in. Send them right in. Well, I'm certainly glad Cookie's here. Maybe now I can get you back to work. He probably has the news you've been waiting for. Oh, I hope so. Now we're getting places. If Tex got inside those barns and found the trucks with the gambling equipment in them... Oh, come on in, Cookie. Well? Well, you got the report from Tex? No, I haven't got a report from Tex, but I've got a report about him. About him? That's right, Gloria. We just brought his body in from the ranch. Tex died an hour ago of sunstroke. Hollywood mystery time will continue in just a moment. Meanwhile, important Hollywood beauty news important to you. Gorgeous Hollywood stars like Lana Turner know there's no substitute for the appeal of lovely smooth skin. To help keep skin always soft, radiant, at its very best, lots of those Hollywood stars depend on Woodbury Complete Beauty Cream. Now that's important because it tells you exactly how you can give your own precious complexion screen star care. Care that helps prevent underprivileged skin. The flaky roughness and unsightly pores that may come from halfway cleansing and care. All you need is Woodbury Complete Beauty Cream. Because that one wonderful cream performs all four basic beauty purposes. It cleanses thoroughly. It softens and smooths away flaky roughness. As a night cream, Woodbury helps banish old-looking dry skin lines. And it makes a grand powder base. Remember, your complexion should have fine, thorough, absolutely complete care for lovely, soft smoothness. That way, your charm is bound to score a hit on his heart. Remember, only Woodbury has exclusive Stericin, always purifying the cream in the jar against blemish-causing germs. Once you begin using Woodbury Complete Beauty Cream, you'll notice that skin seems smoother, lovelier. Begin tonight with Woodbury, W-O-O-D-B-U-R-Y. Woodbury Complete Beauty Cream. And now back to the Woodbury Complete Beauty Cream program, Hollywood Mystery Time, starring Constance Moore and Dennis O'Keefe. Dan, now what do you think? You still determined to be a cop? Two of your brother's best friends killed inside of 48 hours. Yeah. But for the life of me, I don't see how a husky six-footer like Tex could be killed of heat prostration. Well, I wouldn't believe it myself if the police medical examiner hadn't said it was unmistakable. All the symptoms and effects of the sunstroke. Yeah, it was kind of warm today, but I wouldn't say it was that hot. There's something phony about this thing. Someone doesn't find it soon. I'm afraid there'll be a lot more widows living on police pensions. You know something? Hmm? I've got a hunch that we ought to go out to Mr. Crutcher's ranch and look around. Oh, Jim, you're acting just the way Dad says you always do. You're two full days behind now in your work. No, oh, you and your father. Oh, all right. Then I've got a suggestion. Hmm? Isn't a capable secretary supposed to take all the responsibilities off her employer's shoulders? Yes, but... Well, good, good. Then you stay here and bring my work up to date. I'm going out and pay a little sub-rosa call on Chick Crutcher. And I'm going with you. Hey, the least you two can do is wait for a lady to powder her nose. Oh, 
the way my feet feel, Chip Crutcher hasn't just got a ranch. He must own a quarter of the state of California. Oh, well, we've covered the whole place twice, and we still haven't found out whether Tex Campbell really died of sunstroke. That was a neat trick, Mr. Lawton, making your car backfire and scaring those two hoods away from the gate. Well, here we are at the side of the house again. If it comes to a vote, I say we get back into the car and head for home in a pair of comfortable slippers. Yes, and I second the motion. Hey, hmm? hey, hold it. Look here. Why, it's nothing but a little mound of dirt. Yes, but if that hasn't been poured into a freshly dug hole, I'll eat your hat. Why should anybody dig a hole here and then fill it up again? How do I know? Maybe for a barbecue. Or, or maybe for a body. Ooh, cheerful little child, isn't she? Come on, Stan. I always heard you GIs would rather dig than eat. Well, maybe if you had some of those K rations, you would too, Mr. Lawton. Find anything, boys? <sighs> no, nothing. Up a couple of earthworms. I wish digging foxhole had been as easy. With all this loose dirt. Ouch! Darn, there goes my last good fingernail. Well, you won't have to chew them anymore. Say, uh, I'm down to the bottom of the hole over here. Yeah, me too. From here on down, it's tightly packed. Well, that's the prize for the right answer, Mr. Bones. I don't know. But the prize for the wrong answer is... The commissioner may be forced to ask Cookie for his resignation... Well, who would dig a hole just for the sake of digging up? Gloria. Gloria, give me that still picture of this ranch house. Oh, the absent-minded producer at work. The picture's right there in your coat pocket, dear. Oh, what am I doing wearing a coat in this weather? Now, here, here. Let's take a squint at this picture and... Uh-huh. Hmm. What are you hooming about? Here, here, both of you, look. Where's the big oak tree that's in the picture and that isn't here now? You mean somebody dug up an oak tree and threw it away? Well, it certainly looks that way, but, but why? Well, Maybe because Tex didn't die of sunstroke. When Chip Crutcher realized that Tex couldn't have been found out here dead of heat prostration while lying in the shade of a tree, Crutcher had the tree removed. But the medical examiner said it was sunstroke. And if I remember my college chemistry, the sun isn't the only thing that can cause heat prostration. You're right, Mr. Lawton. A foreign substance injected into the veins, something like an aniline dye, could raise the body temperature and cause death just the way the sun does. Are you sure you're right? I know Stan's right about the dye. The thing I don't know is whether that's what killed Tex. The only way we're going to find that out is to have a post-mortem. The coroner's back. Mr. Lawton, I'm sorry to tell you that you were right. His death was due to an injection of dye into his veins causing heat prostration by artificial means. Now, if you'd like, I'll call Captain Cook. Yes, yes, I suppose you'd better tell him, even though there still isn't enough evidence for an arrest. Doctor, don't call my brother. Look, Jim, we've gone this far. Why don't we follow through with it? And if I can help get the goods in Crutcher, no one can say I don't belong to the police force. Oh, I don't know, Stan. If I took you out there, Cookie would have my hide. Yeah, but if my brother went out himself, Crutcher would recognize him and either give him the slip or... Well, look what happened to Tex. Okay, you've convinced me. Let's go, Stan. What do you mean, let's go, Stan? I'm in on this, too. It's dark enough for all of us to pay our final call on Brother Crutcher. Well, here we are at the ranch again. Now, what do we do? Uh, you two stay here in front for a moment while I go around to the other side of the house. Oh, Jim, be careful. Well, hadn't I better go with you, Mr. Lawton? And leave me here all alone? No, honey, if those big man, men come after you, just blind them with one of your dazzling smiles. Stan, you hold Gloria's hand, and I'll, uh, I'll hold my rabbit's foot. If I'm not back in an hour, I'll be sitting up with a sick friend. Vice versa. Gee, Miss Dean, what a wonderful guy. A wonderful guy for what? The woman who marries him is going to be prematurely gray from worry or is going to run out of shoe coupons from trying to keep up with him. Say, Stan, now that you're out of the Army, uh, what are you doing with your number three stand? Uh, number three stamp? Oh, let it go. Just a civilian expression. It shouldn't take this long for Jim to peek into a window. Well, maybe he couldn't see anything. Uh-oh. What's the matter? Well, look. Are those shadows moving around through the blinds? Oh, good heavens. Four men and... Look, one of them holding a gun. Well, it's only a shadow, but the tall one looks like Mr. Lawton. Oh, Stan, you've got to do something. I, I mean, we've got to do something. Come on. Let's go over to the window and see if we can peek in. Oh, this is the noisiest gravel. I think a man like Carruther, who owned a whole fleet of trucks, would lubricate his gravel every thousand miles. Here's the window. Oh, I can't see a thing. Oh, darn it. Shh. What is it? Voices. 
Don't you hear them? Yeah, I can hear them, but and I can't hear what they're talking about. Oh, we've got to get that window open. Oh, but how? I always heard G.I. Joe is the most resourceful soldier in the world. Haven't you got a bazooka in your pocket? I don't even have a pen knife. Wait a minute. Let me try something. Well, what do you know? It wasn't even locked. Either that or I don't know my own strength. Well, don't open it any further. You can hear them good now. Yes, you're, you're quite right, Crutcher. It's just the way it happened. Uh, just enough college chemistry to figure it out. Too bad, Lawton. This goes to prove a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. At least it's going to be dangerous for you. Oh, that sounds very ominous. Yeah, yeah, don't it? But apparently you must have studied chemistry, too. Or else, how would you have known about aniline dyes causing heat prostration? There's a lot of things I know, Lawton, but they ain't going to do you a bit of good. Oh, didn't they teach you not to say ain't in college? Look, Lawton, here it is quick. These two boys of mine are going to take you out in your car, and it's going to have a little accident with the truck. Oh, nothing simple. They'll still be able to recognize you. I think. Come on, Lord. Oh, no, you don't have to pull me. I can walk. You may be able to walk now, brother. Come on, let's get going. So long, Lawton. And uh, even if you hadn't come button into my business, I owed you this. I paid 60 cents to see your last picture. <laughs> you know, if you'd give up this idea, Crutcher, I'll give you a free pass to everything I make. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you ain't, uh, aren't going to make any more pictures. Oh, Stan, Stan, what are we going to do? Come on. Let's get around by the front entrance. Maybe we can find something by the steps. Oh, great. Maybe something will just come to us. Oh, now let's see here a minute. If only there was something we... Wait a minute. That vine up over the doorway. The vine? Yeah. Hurry, let's rip it down. Okay, but... Here. I've got a piece of the vine, but what good's it going to do? Well, it works in the Pacific. I hope it works here. Now, hold on to your end. Yeah. Hurry now. When they come out of the door, we may be able to trip them. But... Come on, here they come. Okay. So long, Martin. And as you college men say, bon voyage. Oh, thanks, Crutcher. Thank you. And as you racketeers say, nuts to you. Okay, but quit stalling. Down the steps and don't try any funny stuff. Jim, go out of the way. Come on, Mr. Lawton. I grabbed this fat one's gun. Mind you, Jim. Come hey, put that gun down or else you I'll... You do nothing. Jim, what a punch. All right, Crutcher, you take one more step okay, now. Okay, okay, okay. Leave the artillery where it is. Uh, you are smart. Maybe you did go to college. It may be a big help to you in the future. Yeah? What do you mean? Uh, maybe the warden will let you compose your own epitaph in Latin. Oh, Jim. Sometimes I think you're wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. Go on. Sometimes I think you're awful. Ah, well, which sometimes is it now? Just a little of both. I think you're wonderful for having convinced Cookie should that Stan join the force. You're awful because you won't get back to work. Oh, but I am working. I'm sitting here planning the greatest romantic epic I ever made. Title, The Girl I Loved. Starring Gloria Dean as Mrs. Jim Lawton. Oh, darling... Darling, can you make it in Technicolor? You know, I look so well in blue. Yes, yes, and your father will be so colorful in his deep purple rays. Now, a Hollywood beauty tip. Girls, if you could just ask some of your favorite Hollywood stars like Olivia de Havilland, Lana Turner, and Lorraine Day about beauty care, you'd almost certainly hear about the wonders of complete skin care with Woodbury Complete Beauty Cream. Famous stars depend on Woodbury, and at bedtime, many of them believe in the famous Woodbury Beauty Nightcap with Woodbury Complete Beauty Cream. Here's all you do. Cleanse skin thoroughly with beauty-giving Woodbury tissue off the cream, and skin is gloriously free of stale cosmetics, dust, and dirt. Then, swirl on a delightful, cool film of Woodbury Complete Beauty Cream and leave it on all night. It helps banish flaky roughness, softens and smooths your skin to exquisite and daring fresh charm. You can try Woodbury for as little as ten cents. Then, when your thrilling new beauty wins admiration from him... Get the dollar twenty-five size Woodbury Complete Beauty Cream, the cream for complete beauty care. Tune in again next.
next week at this same time for Woodbury's double feature, Luella Parsons, with exclusive news about your favorite movie stars and another thrill and laugh packed story with Dennis O'Keefe and Constance Moore in Hollywood Mystery Time. Music on this program was arranged and conducted by Charles Hathaway. This is James Doyle saying goodnight for Woodbury for the skin you love to touch. This is the American Broadcasting Company.